top five reasons this is happening to the Pac-12. Number five, terrible market conditions. This was not the time to negotiate a media deal. Now, they still could have gotten one done, uh, or in, and still may. But the terrible market conditions on the media deal with um, ESPN restructuring and going through layoffs, with you know Fox just gone even bigger on the Big Ten, with CBS going big on the Big Ten, with NBC going in on the Big Ten, you know, with the SEC taking up even more real estate on ESPN, they it was just a bad situation for them all the way around. But uh, that being said, there could have been a way through this. Also, other bigger things going to market, you know, in coming years hurt them. So that didn't help. This was not their fault. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't control the American economy um, as much as they would, I'm sure, like to. But yes, the terrible market conditions certainly uh, led into that. Yeah, it uh, did. But you know, you had the hopes that you know, well, Apple's going to step up to the table or whatever. And yeah, it just so happened that streamers were starting to cut hundreds of millions of dollars from their their studios. Uh, not all of them the same, of course, or you know, to varying degrees. But uh, it was not the explosion of spending from everybody and anybody that it was just a year prior to that, it felt like. It wasn't the the, the boom that we uh, had seen, and uh, it did seemingly turn on a, maybe not on a dime, not that quickly, but pretty quickly. And so, yeah, what you thought was going to be this big, vast open window with a number of suitors and tons of cash uh, actually got narrowed down pretty quickly, whether you're talking about the actual suitors or the money itself. And so, yeah, that was something that to Brett Yormark's credit or to whoever suggested him, I, I'm you know, of the belief that he probably was as uh, involved as anybody because of his media background. That's part of the reason why you got him. And this is also the thing for the Pac-12 is how did that media guy see it and our media guy who we hired as commissioner didn't see this coming. Um, but... You uh, saw your mark and company get very proactive because they knew that this was looming. They knew that it wasn't going to keep expanding. If anything, it was going to start subtracting. And they saw the writing on the wall. They saw that they weren't going to market for yet another year after the Pac-12. They looked at the spots on ESPN and Fox and everywhere else, and they saw that there weren't going to be uh, many places available if the Pac-12 went, you know, soaked a lot of those up and. Had they not done that, then they're in the same position the Pac-12 is in now. So, yeah, absolutely. The, the whole thing keys on the Big 12 going to market first and then that leading to the timing of it just being a terrible market with more limited spots and limited money for the Pac-12. Well, and that leads into number four, the Big 12 cut in line. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing about this, though. The Big 12 did cut in line, but Brett Yormark correctly assessed that why is there a line? Yeah. There's not a line. Let's just go ask if we can renegotiate ours. And they didn't even really renegotiate. They kind of just took the deal that was on the table, you know, with some kickers in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they knew because they saw, like, things are about to get wild here. And they got their future solidified. And they negotiated for, all right, so what if we add more teams? They didn't have to go back to the table. So it's everybody they go to, they can just drop the sales pitch down on the table and go, here's the deal. Yeah. Here's why we want you. Here's what we can promise. Here's the here's the deal that you're getting. You don't have to worry. Like, you don't have to worry. We'll sell you on the Big 12 as much as you want, but here's what you'll know you'll be getting, and the Pac-12 couldn't do that. I mean, last Friday, Rick George was there in Las Vegas wanting to see some numbers, and they'd had enough delays and enough kicking the can down the road, so to speak, and he couldn't see numbers. But if he FaceTimed Brett Yormark right after that, Brett Yormark could hold up a piece of paper and say, this is official, this is done, this is negotiated, and this is exactly what you're going to be making in these years and for how long and on what networks and la di da da He could show him proof. Proof. And that's one thing that George Klevkov and the Pac-12 uh, do not have yet still. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, they cut in line, so to speak, but I think it was just smart uh, to say, do we have to, like, are we waiting in line here? Like, do we have to, do I have to wait behind them? Or can I just go when I want to and, get, you know, and make something happen? Well, yeah, you realize you can just go when you want to. There's no waiting around for somebody else to go first. So go do what you feel is best. They did. And, and that was the, the move of all moves in, in terms of this conference and now looking at uh, the future of it. Number three, they refused to expand when they had the chance. 
The Big 12 was on the canvas, man. They were on the canvas. And you could have probably completely destabilized their league by picking up the phone. Uh, which time are we talking about? When Texas and Oklahoma left. Yeah. They could have done it. Now, granted, they had some outside factors in that. But I'm just saying they could have done that multiple times. They could yeah. have done that when Texas and Oklahoma were still in the Big 12. They could know. have gotten Texas and Oklahoma. That's now, what I'm saying. Now, granted, the reason that didn't happen, I don't blame them on the Texas thing because of the Longhorn Network. Yeah. Had Texas let that go, they'd be in the Pac-12 right now, and we'd be, you know, I don't know, we, we, we wouldn't even be here in the studio. I don't know. And that The butterfly effect of that would, yeah, have, who knows? would, yeah. would have really made things complicated. But, but, yeah, no, they didn't want that then. They didn't. They've had the chance to expand, to get bigger, to get out in front of this, and they never did. And now they've lost three teams in one year with no answer to their current members and their fans with what they're going to do. And for some people, that will be okay because they chose uh, their culture, so to speak, uh, or their place in academics above athletics. And that's their right. That's what you choose to do. But there is some fallout from that, and we're seeing it today. And we're going to continue to see it in some form or fashion. So, yeah, they they have uh, definitely an opportunity when uh, they're sitting, they're just rethinking things. And, well, how could this have gone different? Well, there's going to be a lot of chapters of what if with the Pac-12. And certainly there's been multiple times where they probably could have picked on uh, the Big 12 and grabbed some teams. Um, but especially this last time around when, you know, you had a Stuart Mandel writing that, and I know he's, he's, he's said differently since then, but, uh, you know, they could have gone and just delivered the kill shot, and they were like, nope, we're too good for those schools, and moved about their business. And, and you know, now you can see why some Big 12 fans are enjoying the news today. Yeah. Um, hey, Maxwell, real quick pause on this. If Oregon and Washington do join, guess the percent chance for it happening this week and or two weeks. I don't know. I, I, and somebody else asked if there's the same deadline of August 1st for the other schools. I don't think that's going to be true. I think they wanted to start the ball rolling by August 1st, and then maybe they'll give everybody else – a couple more days past that to figure out what they're doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that you give them a deadline of like you got to join by by August first. Yeah, I think that this kind of, if anything, soothes the process a little bit. Look, they 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 made the mark that they needed yes, to make. Yes, exactly. They got they, they got made it the, rolling. The first move, and so now they can kind of like just sit back and like let a lot of this all now play out. Because now, like, what are Oregon and Washington hearing in that meeting right now, mm-hmm. and what are they thinking coming out of that? You know, so like, kind of let some of the other stuff occur. And then deal with that as it goes. But yeah, I wouldn't put a high percentage on those two particularly right now. But I will say that I'm whatever my percentage used to be, it's higher now than it's ever been before in regards to those two, just because of, of the way things have shaken out. So yeah, I wouldn't put like anything substantial on it. I'd say like ten percent chance, but I, I am it's better than the the two percent chance that I thought for the longest time. Yep. Number two, years of poor leadership and. Larry Scott um, had a lot of big ideas that didn't work out. The Pac-12 Networks and DirecTV essentially torpedoed that. I've never watched a program on the Pac-12 Networks. And if it's college football, I've, I've gone and found it somewhere. I've even had to watch the Longhorn Network. As much as I really was mad that it was added to my cable package, uh, I've watched it uh, because I've had to watch games that are on it. So... If there was a game I wanted to watch on it, I'd have found it, but they could not get on DirecTV, and that torpedoed them. And then they had this problem with Comcast, and there's all this subterfuge and possibly illegal activity going on there and money that they owe. And then George Klyovkov stepped into a situation um, that I don't think he had all the facts to, and I'm giving him a lot of credit here, and then kind of bought the, the party line of everything's fine. You know, but right now he's like Kevin Bacon at the end of Animal House, like all is well, mm-hmm. all is well, all is well. Yeah, no, right. it's not, man. It's it's not. You were in a bad situation. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Larry Scott did a lot of damage that they didn't ever quite recover from, and you know, George was brought in to correct that, and if anything, um, you know, intentionally not added to it. So yeah, poor leadership has gotten them to where they are. Um, they should have made a move last year to expand or sometime within the last year rather than now being almost forced to just to basically survive. Should have been more aware of the possibilities that, no, not everything is okay with all of the schools. And yes, a Colorado might want to make a move, but it just seemed like they refused to believe that was a possibility just because of hubris or whatever you want to chalk that up to. So yeah, leadership definitely bit them in the butt, not just Scott, but in so many ways, 
uh, whatever factored into the decisions that Klyovkov was making it, as well. And and on the flip side, you know, Bob Bowlesby wasn't universally loved, but by the end, he took a strong stance and he helped the Big 12 basically plug the holes and, and prevented it from sinking and moved very quickly after the OU Texas mess and then exited gracefully with his head held high because he did the best probably thing of his entire job there at the very end, right, with just keeping it afloat. And then your mark's obviously done uh, some tremendous uh, work in just changing the perception and uh, shifting the the narrative and all of that. I do want to mention real quick, and we do need to run here, but Rick George said there will be less travel in the Big 12, playing in more favorable time slots where they can get greater national exposure. But here's the deal. How much are we talking about linear and streaming and all this stuff over the last year? Streaming is the future. Streaming is the future. A lot has been made about linear partners in today's day and age. Fox and ESPN are who we want to be aligned with. So that's from Colorado's Rick George. Yep. Also, the poor leadership, that extends to the presidents of these universities, too. Sure, yeah, Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Like, everybody who's on the executive committee, all of that. Sure. This is all on you. Like, George Klyovkov has marching orders, and those come from, from those presidents. presidents so, yeah. like, uh, same with Larry Scott. Those guys were not, uh, the, like, they have not done what they're supposed to do, but they do have getting their marching orders from people who also not doing what they're supposed to do. And number one, lack of self-awareness. And this kind of maybe bleeds back into that leadership a little bit in that, look, from the minute USC and UCLA left, they have yet to deal with the fact that they're gone and just juxtaposed it to the Big 12. It was like, honestly... The tact was after the first couple days of how could you do this? It was like, all right, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord spits you. We're going ahead. And as where <laughs> kind of like they're reacting with Colorado in some cases already, yeah. of like San Diego State and SMU yeah. are an upgrade. Yeah. But USC and UCLA, it's just like they didn't admit to themselves like they're gone. After this year, they're not playing games in your league anymore. Yeah. And in their media negotiations going on, I just have this feeling where they're saying, well, we should get this much because this is what we had before. And they're like, yeah, but LA is gone. They're like, yeah, but we are in LA. I'm like, but you're not, mm -hmm. but you're not. And those were, especially USC, those were your best numbers. You've lost your best ratings. You've lost them. Steve Carell has left the office. It's a different show now, man. You cannot, just come to us and say it's the same because it's not. And I think they kept going back and in their own minds, a lot of them, the power brokers just could not get that out of their head that things were different. That, and in some cases probably just didn't care, uh, I yeah. suppose, because you had, I think you had to have a mixture of both, but yeah, certainly um, there was one line of thinking and then there was the actual way of things and hard lesson to learn. I don't know if it'll sink in for everybody involved or if they'll learn all that much from it, but you would hope so for the Pac-12 fan base's sake and just for the, their future. But, yeah, there was a little bit of a of that definitely going on, and um, the chickens have come home to roost uh, mm -hmm. today, and we'll see what uh, what else occurs here because the ball is, is rolling now, baby, and uh, it's going to be fascinating to see how everybody reacts moving forward. Absolutely. Thanks to Jim Williams. Thanks to Rhett Lashley. That was 